Hello everyone, I hope you're doing very well. Really interesting and exciting video we've got for you today. Something we've discovered and other people know about it, but we've literally only just discovered it. It's a great thing about aviation, there is so much history, cool history out there that needs to be rediscovered. So today we're looking at Operation Have Donut. In fact, we're looking at just a small op section of Operation Have Donut in 1969. What we've got here in this little Word document is three links. These three links I will link in the video description of this video so that you can go and have a look. Here is the official Wikipedia document on Have Donut and you've got a slideshow in there. Here it is a, an auxiliary one. This is an Area 51 special project about have donut and I'm sure there are more links out there on this and here is a presentation that we put together that we're going to be looking at today this is very much going to be if you're like a first part video on have donut and then if we can get more information together from you guys and what we'd really like to get is real pilots who took part in the have donut operation to come on and do a follow-up video I mean that would be a real sweet piece of history we could put together today for this video we're going to have a look at the uh, Grim Reapers uh, presentation so let me put this link in so here is what we've got declassified in year 2000 19 years ago DIA task number Tango 65202 1st of August 1969 1969 tactical analysis of USA F and US Navy planes should be fighters really contemporary fighters versus the fish bed e the mig 21 uh, and what this is this is a document this is a report is classified because it contains intelligence information collected on foreign aircraft and presents tactical performance comparisons of the foreign aircraft for the equivalent usaf and usn aircraft and what we've got we'll skip ahead we've got official tactical intelligence empirical data from testing on american contemporary fighters 1969 with the fish bed with the mig 21 f4 phantom f105 and so it's really great history and there's two really cool things about this. First, this is official documentation from 1969 after the tests. And the second thing is, this is my favourite time in history, 1969. My absolute, what I consider the pinnacle of military aviation. F4 Phantom, Thunder Chief, F111, Super Sabre. You know, these are the, what I consider the best. You, you can keep your F22 Raptor, you can keep your F35 Lightning. I'm sure they're very good and what they do, but this is what I consider the pinnacle just before the F15 came out, just before the fourth gens came out. Really cool part of history. So the first thing I need to describe to you is what is a fish bed E. My understanding of the fish bed E is this is not a Russian aircraft. I know it looks like a Russian aircraft, but it was actually a MiG-21 that was captured by Israel. In 1969, they were friendly to United States even back then. 19, sorry, 1967. 1967, they captured one during the Six Day War. RC, do you know which actual version of the MiG 21 that was captured in 1967? Was it a version F? It was. Uh, MiG 21F, yeah. Roger, so 67, six day war, they captured a MiG 21F fully intact with a, like, only a few flight hours on it, wasn't it? Like 30 flight hours or something. Yeah, 135 hours. 135 hours. The first thing they did is they had no use for it, so they shipped it off to America. America dissected it, and from it, America created the Fishbed E. This is not a MiG. This here is, well, maybe not this actual picture, but what I'm trying to explain to you is not a Russian aircraft. It's, a, it's, a, it's an American aircraft. It's the Fishbed E. And it was created on the back of the MiG-21F to simulate. So we could then fly our 1969 American aircraft against it. And of course, this was all extremely relevant because these dogfights were going on 1969 or about to be going on in Vietnam. So this is how the intelligence was gathered and the dogfight techniques were gathered of how to fight the fish bed, the MiG-29 in service with the uh, with the Russians, the uh, North Vietnamese. Operation Have Donut was the operation in 1969 where they either built this or used a captured one, I'm not sure. And they flew it with experienced dogfight pilots up against all of the USAF, USN fighters of the time to distinguish which was better at what role, high altitude, dive, turn rate, uh, climb rate and so on. And that's what this document is, the findings of that. And there are many more than this. We've just taken a, a, a part of it because we could go at this for many hours. Uh, this is unrelated, but it's just an interesting piece of documentation I found while looking for the uh, Fishbed E. I found the MiG-21 E8, of, uh, many versions, of course, of the MiG-21. And this was a prototype, the MiG-21 E8. You see, it looks like a MiG-21, except it has a, an almost EF-2000 nose with a Phantom or Tomcat canopy uh, with four planes on and underbelly intakes 
Um, uh, presumably this was to increase the maneuver capability I don't know just an interesting piece of history I thought I'd throw in because we might not get to look at it again so we're going to start with the first part of the document part one comparative tactical analysis of the F4 of the time now we don't know what version it was it doesn't say and there were several versions of the F4 in operation in 1969 so we can't determine which for we think probably this C but we don't know against the fish bed E. The F4 has the capability to control an engagement below 15,000 feet by exploiting the MiG-21 airspeed limitation and airspeed bleed-off characteristics at high G, which all sound sensible, by orientating an attack towards the fish bed E's blind cone in lag pursuit type manoeuvring and by operating in the vertical during ACM, the F4 can defeat the MiG-21. B. Acceleration comparison. Acceleration performance of the F4 is superior in military and after perla power up to 30,000 feet. A significant, which is pretty much as high as they're ever going to go, a significant advantage is apparent in military power and a slight advantage which demonstrated in after burner power. So they literally got the fish bed E and the F4, put them in formation and, you know, went full burn or whatever. Below 15,000 feet, the F4 can easily accelerate to above the usable airspeed uh, which is Mac 0.98 of the fish bed E. C, zoom comparison. I'm assuming that means zoom a zoom climb. The F4 has a significant advantage in military power zoom performance from low altitude up to 30,000 feet. Wow, I didn't even realise it could do 30,000 feet on military power. That's impressive. Those good old J79s. It has a slight advantage over the MiG-21 in afterburner power zoom capability up to 20,000 feet. Turn comparison. The MiG-21 has more instantaneous G available than the F-4 at any given airspeed up to the limit load factor of the aircraft. The MiG-21 loses airspeed more rapidly during high G manoeuvring than the F-4 and the subsonic thrust limited turning performance of the MiG-21 was about one fourth G less than shown on current energy manoeuvrability charts. So that's EM charts. So that's the findings between the current F4 and the MiG-21. Now, if you want that put in layman's terms to you, you can go to the third link that I'm giving in this video, and uh, you can see a, a chap there. I do apologize, I've forgotten his name, but it's clearly displayed on the website. And he's put this more into layman's terms for you. So you can go through that, if you like, for a summary on each of these engagements. Next, absolute, I mean, I should say as well, F4, what a plane RC. Most beautiful plane ever made? maybe it's yeah, it's it's, nice. it's tomcat-esque in its beauty um i guess a lot of people watching this don't you know watch an f4 it's you know that is that's cool plane engineering the noise the smoke absolutely wonderful to see those things performing and another good one uh i've never seen this in my lifetime unfortunately i never will it's the f 105 Thunder Chief, a real big bruiser tactical bomber were they actually used in dogfights i have absolutely no idea absolutely no idea um, I, I just don't know enough about them. Let's see what the tactical findings are. F-105, unknown version, against the fish bed E to MiG-29, uh, MiG-21F. The F-105 should press an offensive attack only if an initial rear hemisphere advantage exists. Prolonged manoeuvring engagement should be avoided. <laughs> no shit. The SB limit of the MiG-21 below 15,000 feet can be easily exceeded by the F-105 if defensive separation is required. So we can outrun it. If we drop our stores, we can outrun it. Lag pursuit offensive manoeuvring to the MiG-21's blind cone, mutual flight support and hit and run tactics should be employed by the 105. So basically, don't get in a dogfight with it. Just run away for it. Or if you really have to engage it in air-to-air, -air, do hit and run with your speed. Simple as that. And just from, I don't know much about the 105, but just from basic obvious logic, yeah. That's just obvious. Acceleration comparison. The 105 in military and afterburner power closely matches the MiG-21 in acceleration performance up to 15,000 feet altitude from subsonic airspeed to, I think that's, I'm not sure what that is, Mach 1.05, I don't really get that. The F-105 can easily accelerate to above 0 0.9. Eight. I, again, do you know what this IMN is? Can you research that quickly, RC? I'm assuming it's Mac. Yeah, let me look. Yeah. Or 595 KIAS below 15,000 feet and exceed the SB limit of the fish bed E. Turn comparison. This is going to be bad for the Thunder Chief. The MiG-21 has a distinct advantage in turn capability at all airspeeds and altitudes. The 105 therefore should utilize hit and run tactics and avoid prolonged turning engagements with the MiG-21. So 
Couldn't be more basic than that. Fire control and armament. The 105's air-to-air -air missile firing capability is equal to that of the MiG-21. However, the F-105 has a superior gun system with its higher cyclic rate and better gun sight system. I wonder... Oh, God, to get this plane in DCS. Come on, guys. One of you, scrap the F-15E. Don't want the F-15E. Get that. Get that in there. It's going to be sweet. Any idea what gun was on the Thunder Chief? I don't... Was it a Mike 61? Or was it, this was before Mike 61? I can't remember, I'll see. I really don't I know. Don't, I don't know, but I, I can tell you that INM is indicated mock. Right, so it is Matt. Yeah, that's basically the same thing. Okay, fine. APR 25 R Hall. That's presumably a piece of equipment, but I don't know what that piece of equipment is. The APR, APR 25 R Hall equipment will not provide sufficient warning for the 105 pilot to negate a missile attack by the Fish Bed E. Radar warning receiver? Early radar, radar warning receiver? I'm guessing? I don't know. Jammer? Yes, A N A P R 25 R H A W uh -huh. Uh -huh. is electronic warfare. Right, so it's not good enough to fool the fish bed um, in a uh, radar-guided missile attack. Very good. And then we just get better. We've come from the F-4 to the Thunder Chief to the Aardvark, the F-111A. Now, this is a piece of kit. Now, some of you won't remember, but some of you will. The air shows in the 90s, um, REF Mildenhall for me, this thundering down... Uh, Mac, you know, you, you could go right up to the sound barrier back in those days. You weren't restricted to 0 0.88 or whatever it is now for British air shows. And the thing was, and it's so big, it was blistering along. It had a massive condensation cloud along it. And you were really close to the runway back and then, and it blew your ears out with this whopping J79s or whatever. I can't even remember. It's a long time since I've seen one of these, obviously. And just an amazing piece of kit. One in DCS. Yes, please. Pinnacle of what we should be seeing in DCS. Scratch your... Love the F-16, but scratch your modern planes, get this. This is what you need in DCS if you want to have some fun. Mac 2.5 capable as well, I'll see. Do you realize that? So that's, along with the F-15, that's the fastest thing the USAF had ever for a fighter. Yeah, it's, it's fast. Fighter bomber. Okay, so the F-111 should avoid maneuvering engagements. Well, we know, we're going to know this, obviously, with the Big 21. Since energy loss during prolonged maximum performance maneuvering is prohibited and DCM loss uh, potential is lost. I mean, this is going to be like a Tomcat in terms of weight and drag, but with engines like half, literally half as powerful or, you know, a much less powerful at the end of the day. So that's not going to be a good dogfighter. Acceleration comparison, the MiG-21 had superior acceleration performance from subsonic speed to the maximum Q limit at altitudes below 15,000 feet. The F-111 has a definitive, uh, sorry, a definite advantage above uh, 0.98 Mach or 5.95 KIAS. Okay, so the MiG-21 is faster and then this is faster after Mach 1. Turn comparison, the MiG-21 has superior turn capability at all altitudes and airspeeds and the F-111 should not attempt to engage in a turning fight at any altitude where I mean anyone could tell you that just by looking at the thing but still lovely to have it there in data after two pilots took this and well three pilots at this and then 21 and had a dog fight cool right RC that's He's, right that's the one that had the swoop that had the wing sweep yeah it just reminded me of very much of the Tomcat um it was actually going to be mm -hmm. I might get this wrong but I think it was going to be the predecessor to the Tomcat um they were going to use it for carrier landings but landing gear problems or something they have problems with they couldn't do it, and so they scratched it for naval use, made it just USAF as a fighter bomber, and then made the Tomcat for, for, the, for the Navy, you know, designed as a Navy uh, intercept fighter. But amazing, beautiful piece of history. This is an that A version. a nice plane. I wish they would put it in yeah, DCS or bo a bomber. I really be good. I'm just not a fan of these modern planes. Um, anything about the Aardvark, the Thunder Chief, or the Phantom that you wanted to uh, butt in at this point, RC? Nope. Right, another brilliant plane. I remember having a model of this when I was very, very young, a Super Sabre. And uh, yeah, uh, RC thinks it's ugly. I don't think it's ugly. I think it's beautiful. I think it is really... Uh, now, I can't remember if it's the first supersonic fighter in the, in the Air Force. I think it was, but I stand to be corrected as ever. And what they did is they take the F-86, the, you know, the Sabre 1, and they put it on steroids. They elongated it. They swept the wings back further. They put an afterburner on it and made it punch through the sound barrier. And it goes, I can't remember, Mac 1.3, Mac 1.4, something like that. And um, I remember it as a widow maker. But you're pushing the boundaries of aviation so much with this F-100 Sabre. It, one, one it in, was the first super 
It was, right, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is Spider. this is obviously 10 years before I was born, 20 years before I was born, but uh, it's, it's, it's beauty in simplicity of purpose and design is not lost on me. And um, I would love to have this in DCS. Again, keep your F-15E, give me the 100 Super Sabre. This is, this is what, this is pure aviation. Anyway, F-100D, D version against the MiG-21. This is going to be a good fight. I mean, this is a lot older. Mm, this is a bit older than the MiG, but we'll see. F-100 should avoid maneuvering engagements with the, what a surprise, MiG-21. Effective DCM. I don't actually know what DCM is. Any idea? Can you quickly look? Is possible yeah, by accelerating beyond, basically, Mach 1, uh, limit of the MiG-21 below 15,000 feet. Hit and run attacks can be accomplished and lag pursuit maneuvering to the blind area is most effective. Visual scan and mutual support are essential. Again, pretty much, more or less, don't get in a dogfight, a turn fight with a MiG-21 unless, you know, you're in his blind spot and you're in, you're in a safe lag pursuit. Now, it says do hit and run. My only complaint about that, complaint about that is that this is much slower aircraft than the MiG-21. So I'm surprised that's a thing, but I guess they know what they're talking about. Acceleration performance. The MiG-21 has a significant advantage over the F-100. That doesn't really, not going to really surprise anyone. In both military and afterburner acceleration in all fighter regimes. So it's just much faster than this. Pretty much we expect that. One thing I should say is that the MiG-21 we get in DCS is not the MiG-21 we're talking about here. The MiG-21 we get in DCS is a 1972 first flight, I believe. BIS version, if you like, it's the daddy. Um, oh, that's Even that's not true, but certainly of the time, uh, which is a more modern version than we get here. So the version we've got here is a little older, a little less powerful, and so on. Turn comparison. The MiG-21 has a significant advantage in the turn capability at all airspeed and all altitudes. Now, I'm actually surprised by that, but I guess that's that nasty MiG-19 type sweet wing that, that's doing that. In all prolonged turning engagement. Uh, sorry, I've lost that. Therefore, the F-100 should not attempt to defeat the MiG-21 in a prolonged turning engagement. Hit and run tactics are effective, providing the 100 airspeed is kept well above 450. So don't slow down, basically, and you're going to be okay for a hit and run as long as you do it properly. And this hit and run is all about catching, obviously, the MiG-21 in an opportune situation with low airspeed or low situational awareness. Um, you know, you're not going to try and hit and run him at when he's going Mach 1. D, fire control and armament. The F-100 missile capability is approximately equal to the MiG-21s, although the AIM-9 capacity is greater. Radar ranging of the MiG-21 is missile, uh, sorry, in missile mode combined, and I do apologise, but I appear to have lost the bottom of that. Um, we'll have to find that at some point. Super Sabre radar, and, and it's in 1969, do we actually have a fire control radar? And what type of missiles was it firing? What type of AIM-9s was it firing, RC? That's F-100, 1969. Let me take a look. A DCM, I can't find right now, but I believe it's related to ACM. Uh, could you see what the Sidewinder was in? 19, I'm guessing it was Sidewinder Bravo, but in 1969, I may be completely wrong there. And now we're talking about the big boys. Every plane we've looked at today is just perfect. That is perfect, that is perfect, that is perfect, that is perfect. And the most perfect of them all, apart from an EE Lightning, is an F-104. Now, why is it a D version? A D version is actually a trainer version of, uh, that's why it looks so silly here. But obviously for the tests, I'm guessing this is the only one they could use. And it would be basically equivalent to the to the C uh, version anyway. Same b Bravo, yeah, I thought so. Pretty uh, terrible missiles, but yeah. So, Starfighter, amazing. Want one in DCS? Yes, please. Again, scrap all the modern bullshit. Let's have this. I would literally pay all the money I have, which is well, pretty much nothing, so it's irrelevant. But um, my pay in what can I pay in? What currency do I have? Oh, I must have something. I'll pay in some. I'll pay in IOUs to have these done instead of the ones that are planned. Anyway, F one hundred four should employ high speed hit and run tat. No shit. Hit and run tactics during offensive action and avoid prolonged maneuvering engagement with the MiG-21. If the offensive situation deteriorates, the F-104 should uh, separate by accelerating to above Mach 1 and below 15,000 feet. Acceleration comparison. The 104 has a slight advantage over the MiG-21 in military and afterburner power accelerations up to 30,000 feet. Uh, it, wasn't pati I mean, it wasn't an amazing accelerator, this, but it's the speed it had because of the wing and because of the bod and whatever. It's the overall speed it could achieve. You know, I think first Mach 2 fighter, again, may have that wrong. Maybe that was a Delta Dart. I can't remember. It's a long time since I looked. Turn comparison. The MiG-21 has a superior turn capability at all altitudes and airspeed when compared to the F-104. And, and the F-104 should never engage in a prolonged turning fight with the MiG-21. Obviously, this is basically just a missile. 
it can't turn. And it's a Widowmaker. To be honest, everything here is a Widowmaker. Uh, especially that. And that. How many pilots did they kill? And then again, Widowmaker. That's not saying there's anything wrong with the plane. That just means that they are hard to fly. And you need very high pilot skill. That's all it means. They had a poor safety record. Poor safety record. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, it was the pilot's fault. You know, they were pushing above the envelopes. But we still can call it a Widowmaker. You know, the numbers don't lie at the end of the day. The zoom capability. The F-104 demonstrated a better zoom capability than the MiG-21. However, if the zoom maneuver terminates at low airspeed, the F-104 is at a tactical disadvantage and vulnerable to follow-up. Makes complete sense. Fire control and armament. The F-104 fire control system is slightly superior to that of the MiG-21. The two aircraft have equal IR missile capability. However, that of the F-104 with the M61, I didn't know I had an M61, so weird, has slight advantage because of the cannon cyclic rate and accuracy of the sight system. The F-104 ASG-14 radar system is superior to the range-only radar system in the MiG-21. Again, that's probably different radar to in the BIS version, I don't know, but that, brilliant plane. Next, another brilliant plane. Again, well, finally, someone's had the sense to put this in uh, DCS. What we need to do is petition ED, I think to get these planes put in. They're not hard to get access to, are they? Probably not. The problem is people won't buy them. No one knows what that is. 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 So frustrating. We should do, what we should do is just start doing videos about them until we sink it to everyone's brain how much we need these RC. Must stop whinging. That's what happens when you get passionate about a subject RC. F5N, I don't actually know what the November version is, but I believe it's going to be very similar to the F5E. Within the performance limits of the aircraft, the F-5E, uh, sorry, the F-5 has considerable potential for engaging the MiG-21 in a tactical situation. We know this because it does indeed outmaneuver the MiG-21 more or less in DCS. At altitudes below 15,000 feet, the F-5 has performance advantage. The tactical engagement can be controlled effectively by the F-5, and if defensive separation is required, it can exceed the MiG-21's airspeed envelope below. I didn't actually know that. The 15,000 feet, the F-5 can closely simulate the MiG-21 up to Mach 1.2 for combat crew training in ACM. Dissimilar aircraft engagements. B. Acceleration comparison. The MiG-21 has a slight advantage in afterburner acceleration and an equal acceleration capacity in military power. The F-5 is limited to Mach 1.25, 1.6 for R1, and the, I think, uh, and the MiG-21 has a distinct performance advantage at higher Mach numbers. Yep, no doubt about it. The F-5 has an advantage when operating below 15,000 feet above the Mach 1 Q limit of the MiG-20. I'm not sure what this Q limit is of the MiG-21. I think it might be if you go faster than that, the engine cuts out, but I stand to be corrected. C, turn comparison. The MiG-21 has a slightly better instantaneous G capability. However, overall turn comparisons appear about equal to so the F5. I thought the F5 was better, but maybe it's just tighter. B, fire control operation. The F5 is comparable to the MiG-20 in fire control capability. So that's the F5. Next, now, this is a plane so cool, I don't even know about it. It's the, I think it's the, the 101 of Voodoo, isn't it? So this, yeah, it is. this sweet kind of fighter bomber here, I don't even know anything about, but I believe it was in Vietnam. So the RF-101, the most effective defensive maneuver for the RF-101 is, is an unloaded maximum power acceleration to above, so just an, just an extension, just an unloaded extension to Mach 1 below 15,000 feet. So just put it in a dive for five degrees, full power, I'm assuming it's got afterburners, and run away. A steep descent, 45 degrees or greater, oh wow, 45 degrees, when possible, will provide background IR clutter, increase the acceleration rate, and force the attacking MiG-21 to enter the flight regime where high longitudinal control forces are encountered. Acceleration comparison, the MiG-21 has a slight advantage over the RF-101, which is a big heavy thing, in the afterburner acceleration up to Mach 1.2 at 16,000 feet, at 16,000 feet. The RF-101 is comparable to the MiG-21 in military power acceleration from 300 knots to Mach-1 uh, at 15,000 feet. So don't do anything except dive and run, RC, if we ever get this plane, which, again, give, please. Give, please. Turn comparison. The MiG-21 has a superior turn capability in all flight regimes, obviously. That is not a dogfighter. B-66, you know what? Again, just don't uh, know anything. The voodoos yes, weren't really used in Vietnam. They were more uh, used for strategic air command. Yeah, because these were nuke bombers, I believe. Yeah. And, and fired they had, nuclear uh, rockets. They fired nuclear rockets uh, against the uh, bears and stuff, didn't they? Well, they would do. Yeah, they, they were... They belong to the tactical air command. Roger. So there was never really any chance of them getting in dogfights, but understood. B-66, summit again, know nothing about. Absolutely no doubt, an awesome piece of history. B-66 is vulnerable to attack, yeah, really, by the MiG-21. Escort protection 
is mandatory during operation in a high MiG threat area and BC survivability depends on the escort effectiveness and teamwork. I wonder if these were in Vietnam. I don't remember them being there, but uh, I think it's probably B-52 land, wasn't it? 3G defensive spiral yeah. considered maximum performance for the B-66 will not negate the MiG-21 the MiG missile or gun attack. However, the descending spiral will assist the escort in friendly offensive positions. To, maybe that's something we've got to start thinking about. When we get in trouble, we tend to panic. Maybe a defensive spiral is what we should be doing to allow our buddies to get to us. In offensively positioning on the attacker may, may provide the time required for the escort to perform a diversionary missile launch or obtain a kill. So basically, if you're in trouble, get in a defensive spiral and radio for help and hope for the best. Because what I always find is that when a guy's in trouble, he panics, as you do when you're in trouble, and he just shoots off in, off in random directions because you can't really control the direction of the fight when you're being chased, you know, you do what you have to do to survive. And Sod's Law means that they end up going away from you and never catch the guy up and um, they end up dying. Um, it's impossible to vector them to you because, like I said, you don't get control of where you go. So maybe a defensive spiral is the way to go if you've got altitude. Um, maybe we need to teach that to the guys. Right, back They were used in mm -hmm. Vietnam, mm -hmm. um, both as bombers and as electronic uh, reconnaissance and countermeasures. Wow. How about that? Brilliant. Finally, RF4C, uh, and oh, just look how cool that plane is. Mm. Uh, RF, reconnaissance version, I think. So these must have been working over Vietnam, taking pictures or whatever. Look at the anhedra and dihedral of those of the stabs and the wings. It's cool, right? No idea why, but it's cool. Uh, not much on this one. The RF-4C equipped with the QRC 353A chaff dispenser can effectively deny radar ranging information for the fish, fish bed E. As MIG radar look down is obtained and QRC 35A 353A is activated. Radar lock-on is transferred from the R Phantom to the emitted chaff, so it fools his radar. The MiG-21, however, can estimate range visually for the missile attack or use the optical sight manual ranging mode for gun firing. Yes, I remember that training on the MiG-21 biz. So that's it. That's the end of my... I didn't want to go any higher because I could make a you know three-hour video on this, but it's not really going to gain anyone. What we're trying to do with this video is A, gather interest in these planes, best planes they've ever made. Two, Go and have a look at the other, the rest of Operation Donut, uh, Have Donut. Um, it's a massive thing, roughly described as we said, but it's much more extensive than what we said. Three, with what we'd like, I mean, there's only so much you can learn from me nattering away. What we want from this is a follow-up video with maybe some more information, well, definitely more information, but what we really want is experience. There's got to be plenty of guys here out there who drove these planes that I'm looking at here in Operation Donut or in dogfights or whatever, or, or not even pilots, but you know operators, technicians at the time, that were, would be willing to come forward and work with us to do interviews um, to enlighten us more about Operation Donut and just the whole of this time period in history, which is, at the end of the day, frigging awesome. And that's what I've got to say. Anything you want to add to that super RC? The only thing is that there are three fish bed E's on display in the world, um, and the best one being at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. Right, so that's an official American fish bed E. How interesting. Very good, very good. Okay, everyone, I hope that was useful, and see you later.